7 News starts with breaking news. Breaking at noon, two pharmaceutical companies say they will deliver part of the first 100 million available doses of a COVID-19 vaccine to the U.S. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Peggy Finnegan. And I'm Gordon Lesh. The companies made the announcement today. BioNTech and Pfizer teamed up to make the vaccine. Right now, they say it's in phase three trials. It's expected to be ready for approval from the FDA sometime in October or November. We'll be following this announcement throughout the day. Also breaking, the Allegheny County Health Department just released its latest COVID-19 count. There were 79 new cases in the last 24 hours. That is out of 1,200 tests. Those tests taken between August 30th and September 15th. There were also three new deaths, one of those deaths associated with a long-term care facility. Northwestern Elementary School. You can see it right here. Now a Beaver County School District is offering a reward for information on who is behind all this damage. And Channel 11's Liz Kilmer reports. We found several smashed windows. This one actually still has an object through it. And then elsewhere, parts of the property are totally trashed. And now police and school officials want to find out who did this. All around the building, windows are smashed to pieces at the old Northwestern Elementary School. It's nearby field house broken into and litter tossed all over. Darlington Township Police tell Channel 11 they believe it happened over the weekend. The aftermath discovered by a maintenance crew with the Black Hawk School District and reported Monday morning. In their course of uh, checking the school grounds, they determined that uh, multiple windows were broken around the school. Uh, latest count was up near 50 windows that were broken out by different means. The damage amount um, uh, is going to be high. I don't have that estimate at this time, um, but um, it's going to be costly. The district listed the property for sale at the end of last year. Now it's offering a reward for information leading to whoever caused the damage. And the chief tells me he is following up on some leads right now. He says in the past, mischief, vandalism has been an issue here, but there's never been anything to this magnitude. Hear more from him in a report I'm working on for five. Back to you. Severe Weather Team 11 meteorologist Jessica Faith joins us now. And Jessica, a nice day out today, but temperatures are going to be dropping soon. Yeah, that cold front is working its way through the area today. Temperatures for your lunchtime hour in the 60s, mostly in the 70s. Warm spot right now happens to be Greensburg at 77 degrees, 71 in Pittsburgh, Washington. In the upper 60s there to our north and west, and that's where that cold front is. Again, it's going to continue to work its way down toward the south. Um, 68 in Butler, 67 in Beaver. So we're going to continue to track that cold front making big changes as we go into the week. If we're talking much cooler, go ahead and get your sweaters ready. We're also staying dry as that cold front also bringing in some drier air. That means lower dew points. More of what you can expect, especially as we go into the weekend, coming up in just a few minutes. It looks like a war zone to me. Millions along the Gulf Coast are getting a first look at the damage today from Hurricane Sally. More than a quarter million people in Florida lost power, and officials are already predicting billions of dollars in damage. NBC Sam Brock has the latest from hard-hit Pensacola, Florida. This morning, the cleanup and the heartbreak. Florida residents reeling after Sally slammed the coast as a powerful Category 2 hurricane. It looks like a war zone to me. The storm dishing out a trifecta of strong winds, historic rain, and a scary storm surge. Yeah, this is the bedroom. The hurricane toppling trees onto homes, leaving many streets impassable and even ripping apart this bridge. Sally stalled over Pensacola for hours, dumping nearly 30 inches of rain in some areas and devastating business owners like Pamela Hamiak. It just doesn't seem real. I can't believe this is happening. Her boutique hotel, the New World Inn, took heavy damage, and it's not the first time. Oh, yeah, Back in 2004, the hotel was battered by catastrophic flooding from Hurricane Ivan. I thought that was a once in a lifetime storm, but this surge seems, the flooding seems to be almost worse, actually, than what we had then. 
That surge prompting last-minute evacuations. Among them, this boater who was forced to abandon ship. I never fooled with Mother Nature, and I did not expect to have to tangle with her today. But when she was getting the better of me, I gave it to her. She won, I left. Do you know what kind of condition it's in? No idea. A small silver lining. Florida's governor incredibly reporting no fatalities from the storm. But there is going to be um, a, lot of, a lot of property damage. I mean, when you see downtown Pensacola uh, and you see three feet of water there, um, that's going to affect probably every business. Amidst the chaos, the community already pitching in. Oh, absolutely. We'll pull out of this and... Uh... Another month, it'll be all cleaned up and uh, everybody rebuilding and ready for next year. Tim Taylor helping to remove this tree, which landed on his 91-year-old neighbor's roof. That man lucky to be alive, moving from the bedroom to the den just moments before the tree crashed through his roof. That was Dan Brock reporting. There are still more than 200,000 people in Florida who have no power, but with wind conditions calming down, crews are working to fix that. New at noon, state police need your help finding a missing woman. This is Laura Graham Simonetti. She is from Center Township, Butler County, last seen September 6th. She was driving a white 2012 Volkswagen Jetta. She is 54 years old and 5'7". You're asked to call state police in Butler if you have any information. A special hearing will be held today to help determine whether the Christopher Columbus statue in Shenley Park should be removed. The city's art commission will hold the hearing at 5.30 tonight on Zoom. The public will have the chance to comment. The Art Commission will make its decision at a meeting next Wednesday. Vandals defaced the statue on more than one occasion over the summer. Allegheny County leaders are working to keep our elections safe and accessible. The Elections Division will present a plan today to add more voting sites. The offices would be open on only certain dates and times leading up to the election, and they would be available for over-the-counter voting as well as to return your completed ballot. The presidential campaign continues today, focusing on swing states, including Pennsylvania, and a coronavirus vaccine. NBC's Tracy Potts has the latest. Plan, but we do indeed. Here's the government's newly released coronavirus recovery plan. Drug makers will start churning out vaccine 24 hours after FDA approval. Free, with the Pentagon helping distribute in three phases, starting with health workers and high-risk groups. The CDC told governors be ready to distribute two days before the election. But the CDC director tells Congress a vaccine won't be widely available to the public until next summer. If we had a vaccine, say, released uh, today, that it's going to take us probably in the order of nine months, uh, six to nine months to get the American public vaccinated. I think he made a mistake when he said that. It's just incorrect information. I believe he was confused. I, I'm just telling you, we're ready to go. President Trump publicly contradicting his Please chief disease administrator on that and wearing masks. And they are our best defense. I might even go so far as to say that this face mask is more guaranteed to protect me against COVID than when I take a COVID vaccine. It's not more effective by any means than a vaccine, and I called him about that. Let me be clear. I trust vaccines. I trust scientists, but I don't trust Donald Trump. And at this moment, the American people can't either. Democratic presidential nominee Joe Biden promising a national mask mandate if elected. Tracy Potts, NBC News. At least one group wants you to vote in person on Election Day. The U.S. Election Assistance Commission believes it is the only way to make sure your vote counts. They fear that ballots will be rejected for one reason or another. They say it's, quote, very reasonable prediction that between 5 and 20 percent of mail-in ballots will not be counted. And by the way, this commission is a federal agency formed in 2002. It includes members selected by both President Obama and President Trump. Beginning Monday, bars and restaurants in Allegheny County will be able to serve more people indoors, and it's going to be a boost to their business. But more help could be on the way. Jan Lovett's Mike Holden explains how a pair of lawmakers want to make sure these small businesses stay open. It is being called a potential lifeline for the struggling bar and restaurant industry. Local lawmakers just introduced this legislation that would put immediate cash back in their pockets and make a world of difference as the pandemic continues to play out. 
$500 million. That is how much two Pennsylvania lawmakers want to give to struggling bars, restaurants, and businesses in the hospitality industry. That money would make a huge difference for Pete Henderson. He owns and operates Chases at Gabriella's along East Carson Street in the South Side. The pandemic has drastically impacted his restaurant. Senators Pat Stefano and Scott Martin have since taken notice. They just introduced a bill that would offer immediate financial support. The money would come from PA's share of funding from the CARES Act. With ever-changing restrictions and limits on seating, it has certainly been an uphill climb for many. You can only do what you can. You come in and you're blessed if you have eight customers, if you have nine, anything to keep the light and the gas bills on. I mean, you have to do, you can't uh, worry about what yesterday was like. Now, restaurant and food jobs make up roughly 10% of employment right here throughout the Commonwealth. I'm now working to talk with these lawmakers about their push for this legislation and what they hope happens next for Channel 11 News starting at 5 o'clock tonight. Reporting from the South Side, Mike Holden, Channel 11 News. New at noon, first-time claims for unemployment dropped again last week, but many analysts say it's not going down fast enough. The Labor Department reports 860,000 people filed for first-time benefits last week. The number of continuing claims for people who have received unemployment benefits for two weeks or more weeks in a row also dropped. Both numbers beat Wall Street's estimates. Some analysts, though, are still concerned. They say worry about a resurgence of the virus and a lack of more government aid could hurt job growth. Today, you'll be able to get some answers concerning unemployment benefits in Pennsylvania. The state's Department of Labor and Industry will hold a virtual town hall meeting. It will be from 1 to 2 this afternoon. You can watch that meeting on the Labor Department's website. Pandemic pods. Parents with school-aged children have probably heard that phrase. Channel 11 is looking into this new form of learning, what we found out after the break. People are fleeing unhealthy smoke across the West Coast. It is a horrible situation, but for some, it's actually a blessing in disguise. WPXI now. When a major story breaks, this is where you'll find 24-hour coverage. From the Channel 11 newsroom to our crews live in the field, we'll bring you the information you need right now. WPXI now. Always on when you want the latest on breaking news. Every candidate, every voice, every vote matters. From the campaign trail to your backyard, we're talking to the candidates about the big issues and to the voters who will decide the election. Channel 11 News, Decision 2020 coverage you can count on. 
Watch David Johnson and Peggy Finnegan on Channel 11 News at 5. Parents are looking for creative ways Parents are looking for creative ways to keep their kids connected, engaged, and cared for during virtual learning. Some of them are creating pandemic pods. Channel 11's Jennifer Tomazic checked them out and explains how they work. <laughs> Today we're doing a dinosaur dig. Through the fun of finding treasures frozen in ice, Andrew and Copter are learning. They're part of a pandemic pod, a group of families whose kids exclusively spend time together at one of their homes and get help with remote learning. Having a child at home in the midst of what you would call your work day adds a little extra um, stress. Pandemic pods were born out of a need for child care for working parents. Jennifer Penrod and her husband are both working from home while their son Andrew starts kindergarten remotely in the North Hills School District. In their pod, the parents handle the morning virtual sessions and then in the afternoon, their neighbor with a teaching degree comes over to supplement some lessons. They're sitting down in front of a computer for hours during the day. So this is all about experiencing things, being together, making memories, having fun, and learning while they're doing it. We did it! It's out! Nice job, y'all. They're getting feedback from someone who truly understands and who is also motivating them to learn. That is extremely important. Point Park University professor Dr. Linda Hippert has been a teacher and a superintendent. She suggests enlisting college students studying education if your pod is looking for someone to help academically. We don't want students to stay where they are. We want their growth to continue. Four inches. Four inches. Good job. She has been fantastic and came up with an amazing, I mean, I think she could probably open a school herself. Jennifer Tomazic, Channel 11 News. Pretty great idea. Keep in mind, the state has put in certain criteria that pods have to meet, and we have a link to that information on WPXI.com. Golf's U.S. Open starts this afternoon. Ordinarily, it's played in June, but it was delayed by the pandemic. The Open will be at the Winged Foot Golf Club in New York. No spectators will be allowed on the course. And here are a few of the storylines. Tiger Woods looking for his fourth U.S. Open title. At 50 years old, Phil Mickelson is looking for his first U.S. Open championship. And number one ranked Dustin Johnson is the odds maker's favorite. Coverage begins at 2 o'clock this afternoon right here on Channel 11. Pennsylvania sports books enjoyed their best month ever. The return of major sports in August helped the industry rec record $365 million in bets. The month was so strong it was close to surpassing Nevada for the first time ever. SpaceX is scheduled to launch its 13th Starlink mission this afternoon. 60 Starlink satellites will be put into orbit when they're launched from Kennedy Space Center. The satellites will deploy after about an hour after liftoff and are designed to connect more people to the Internet. The launch will be live streamed on the SpaceX website beginning at 2 this afternoon. Your severe weather Team 11 forecast. Happy Thursday. We have pretty fair weather this midday. Temperatures right around the lower 70s, some in the upper 60s overall. Not bad at all to get you going as we head into the afternoon hours. 71 degrees, partly cloudy. Winds are calm, still just a little hazy out there as more of that smoke from the west coast filters into the area and you see just a thin layer of cloud cover. No rain right now. All of the action is to the south and east. We have the remnants of uh, Sally. It was giving most of the rain into Georgia. Now it shifted off toward the north and uh, east there into the Carolinas and even into Virginia. And we have a cold front that will continue to track into the area as the day rolls along, delivering drier air. So we're going to miss out on the rain, but also some much cooler air. That's what we're going to get, especially this weekend. Uh, 77 for the high today, keeping partly sunny conditions can squeeze out an isolated shower emphasis on isolated because rain chances are really slim to none today but we do have that small possibility uh, lower dew points today and uh, as we welcome that small rain chance for today again the lower humidity not really giving a lot of room for uh, a good bit of rain that we would like to have we have been so far a little bit over an inch below the normal amount of rain we should be having for this uh, month. 
We've been, uh, we had just a little over a half inch of rain there. We should be closer to two inches. So um, we're going to continue to trickle down though the humidity. So rain chances will continue to be uh, uh, slim to none as we go toward the rest of this week into the weekend. Here's our humidity forecast and today slightly toward the muggy meter but really staying comfortable and quite comfortable as we head into the weekend as well. Now, what may not be so comfortable, the temperatures. I told you about that cold front coming, giving a blast of much cooler air, and that cooler air will continue to track in through today into tomorrow and really settling in for the weekend. So t uh, tonight, overnight lows dropping into the 50s. So as you walk out the door first thing tomorrow, kind of like this morning. may want to grab a light jacket depending on your comfort level. Temperatures will be in the low to mid 50s, but definitely have a jacket, thicker jacket in hand if you're leaving and heading out first thing uh, f uh, Friday night into Saturday morning. Temperatures are expected to be in the 30s, so we're talking about much cooler air for this weekend, dropping almost 10 degrees for tomorrow's high, and that drier air filtering out the cloud cover. Plenty of sunshine expected for this week. Weekend, and temperatures will be in the 60s. So we're going to keep it below average for the rest of this week. And even as we start next week on Monday, plenty of sunshine to get the kiddos outside. But again, jackets will be needed if they're headed out first thing uh, during the first half of the day. Temperatures only peaking into the 60s. Developing today, new evacuation warnings in Southern California. The Bobcat fire has been raging for 10 days north of Los Angeles, and it is only about 3% contained. About 46,000 acres are charged, uh, charred, excuse me, as of today, and fire officials still don't know what started that fire. Channel 11 meteorologist has been tracking the smoke from the western wildfires as it makes its way to our region. And here's what it looks like from space. These images show, Na uh, show uh, from NASA show clouds of smoke stretching coast to coast. Some of that smoke also drifted into Canada. The wildfires have led to hazardous air quality along parts of the west coast, but air quality in most of the eastern U.S. is not affected. Of course, all that smoke is a health risk for people living out west. And it's causing a whole lot of them to leave their homes in search of cleaner air. They're being called smoke refugees. He was starting to cough a little bit. Uh, we have filters in the home, but you just worry with a little guy like this that he's doing some damage to his lungs, so we'll stay here. One plus, the local Chamber of Commerce there in Oregon says that the crowds are helping local businesses still trying to make up for lost time because of the pandemic. Still to come on Channel 11 News at noon, the head of the FBI heads to Capitol Hill. The election threats his agency is tracking. And shining a light on politics, why a local union decided to splash its endorsement across the city. On Channel 11 Morning News, we bring you what's new, what's happening now, and what's next. That means our newsroom is always searching for new details and new stories. It also means breaking. If it's happening now, I'm on it, bringing you live updates from the breaking news desk. Our crews know the mission, too. We should get this on air now. Brand new confirmed information preparing you for what happens next. How will news stories, weather, and traffic affect your day? What's new, what's now, and what's next? Every morning on Channel 11 Morning News.
Bloomberg's chief meteorologist, Stephen Cropper, tracking the weather in your neighborhood. You might have seen a political message displayed on several Pittsburgh landmarks recently, but not everyone was on board. Science Center, the Gulf Tower downtown, and on the side of Mount Washington, the United Steelworkers Union told our Trib partners it's their way to encourage voting without going door to door. But the Science Center said they were not made aware their building was going to be used, and it was also on the Cathedral of Learning. A Pitt spokesperson says the university did not give them permission to do that. Pitt police asked them to turn it off, and they did. Police are asking for help to find the person who shot a donkey several times with a paintball gun. The animal was shot five times at the Frey Stables in Apollo Armstrong County. He was shot at close range in the side, in the neck, and behind the ear. The owner showed us the areas where the paint has been washed away. We're not very happy about it. I mean, it's very upsetting that someone would do this to an animal. He's yeah. such a sweetheart. He's never done anything to anyone. Since the shooting, the owner says the animal has not been as trusting around people, but the wounds are expected to heal. Well, calling all poll workers the incentives the state is offering for people willing to work this week. And what local students and grads are doing to create change at their schools. You're streaming WPXI now, your source for original local shows. Get the inside scoop on all the hot events, entertainment, and celebrities in and around Pittsburgh every week. Stream Access Pittsburgh on demand anytime on WPXI now. Shutdown, showdown. A federal judge said the governor's restrictions are unconstitutional. WPXI tonight is getting answers. People that I talk to feel very torn about this issue. Too many families are being hurt by this. Count on Channel 11 News. Watch Catherine Amenta and Gordon Lesh on Channel 11 Morning News. 
Students and alumni in the North Allegheny School District are pushing for change, some claiming that racism is rampant in the district. And now a group of young men and women are fighting for inclusion and a change in curriculum. Channel 11's Amy Hudak reports. You, you get like this sinking pit in your stomach and you're like, wow, like people think like this. Like Jamie Martinez says the hateful and divisive words and feelings of some current and former classmates are sickening. He founded NA for Change, calling for anti-racist policies in the suburban NA school district. On social media, the group asked for current students and graduates to share their experiences. Hundreds of comments followed, including this one. I grew up thinking that being Asian was weird and disgusting, so I made fun of myself and tried to whitewash myself so that I'm more like them. NA for Change is calling for the district to add anti-racism curriculum, multicultural clubs for every grade, and a more diverse staff. The majority of people who are attending and working at the school, um, at the, throughout the school district are white. So it's really hard sometimes to express those grievances and be taken seriously. We reached out to the district about the calls for change by some activists. School leaders say, quote, the district is committed to working together with our students, staff and families to continue to build a more inclusive environment. It's Martinez not, uh, says the district yeah, has a responsibility to evolve and be more inclusive for all. An educational system isn't just to teach you about World War II, calculus and, uh, you know, a chemistry equation, but it's also teaching you about how to be an exemplary citizen. And Amy Hudak, Channel 11 News. During the public hearing last night, at least one school board member said N.A. is a leader, can evolve, and will do better when it comes to the issue of racism. Three more Port Authority employees have tested positive for COVID-19. All three work out of the bus garage in West Mifflin. And all of them have family members who also recently tested positive. The total number of cases at the Port Authority is up to 51. A 90-year-old father and his 60-year-old son will pay $300,000 each for running an illegal gambling ring. Bobby and Rusty Ionelli pleaded guilty yesterday to running the ring in Allegheny and Westmoreland counties. The pair was charged with 11 others after a grand jury investigation that launched in 2015. Investigators say the Ionellis used a local wedding vendor to launder proceeds of the gambling ring. Severe Weather TV 11 meteorologist Jessica Faith joins us once again. Yeah, nice and comfortable today, Jessica, but a big cool down is coming. Yeah, we're 71 degrees right now, but tomorrow not, we won't even make it into the 60s. We're talking about some cooler air coming with a cold front that is already starting to work its way through the area and will slide through throughout the rest of the day. Partly cloudy, we could squeeze out an isolated shower. Most are going to stay dry. Coming up in about 15 minutes, I do have your latest drought monitor just to see how we're doing and also an updated look at the tropics and looking at what could develop into our last name storm before we go into the Greek alphabet. Partly cloudy right now. Those temperatures will continue to climb. I just showed you 71 right now in Pittsburgh, getting into the upper 70s by the peak of the daytime heating. And then after sunset, those temperatures starting to trickle down. So how cool are we getting for this weekend? More of those details coming up in just a few minutes. Pittsburgh City Council gave preliminary approval to legislation that would regulate how police use facial recognition technology. The bill requires police to get council approval before purchasing facial recognition software, but it does not prohibit the current practice of allowing the city to use the state's system. A final vote is expected next week. Safeguarding the presidential election was a big topic on Capitol Hill this morning. Congress heard from intelligence officials about election security. Our Jacqueline Fell takes a look at who is being targeted and what's being done to stop it. The FBI director is warning Congress Russia is trying to undermine Democratic challenger Joe Biden's presidential campaign. Russia continues to try to influence our elections, um, primarily through what we would call malign foreign influence, uh, as opposed to what we saw in 2016. Speaking today at a House Homeland Security hearing on the threats facing the country, FBI Director Chris Wray said Russia is carrying out efforts to plant discord in the U.S., 
primarily to hurt Biden because Moscow views him as part of an anti-Russian American establishment. Ray said national security agencies haven't yet seen Russia trying to break into election infrastructure as it did back in 2016 when it hacked voting databases. He says the bureau is working with state and local election officials to bolster security and disrupt and identify threats in order to ensure confidence in the U.S. election system. The FBI says it's also working with Facebook and Twitter to take down fake accounts. Reporting outside Washington, Jacqueline Fell, Channel 11 News. There is still a need for poll workers this November. Yes, Pennsylvania says they still need at least 5,000 people. And as a way to attract them, Pennsylvania is handing out education credits. So nursing home administrators, physical therapists, social workers, family therapists, and speech language professionals are eligible for up to two hours of continuing education credits. Poll workers can earn between $115 and $140 for the day. You have to be a registered voter. And while you have to be 18, there are exceptions for high school students who are 17 years old who wish to serve. There is a special Decision 2020 section right on our website at WPXI.com. You can also find it on the WPXI News app as well. Governor Wolf continues to push for legalizing recreational marijuana despite Republicans' opposition to it. Part of Wolf's reasoning is that legalizing the drug would ease a burden on the justice system. The governor says last year alone, nearly 22,000 people were arrested statewide for having a small amount of marijuana. He believes legalizing pot will add jobs and give the state's economy a much-needed boost. Republicans control both the state House and Senate, and those leaders say they do not plan to consider the issue this fall. A water main break kept repair crews busy in downtown Pittsburgh this morning. That break happened at the intersection of Grant Street and 3rd Avenue, and we were there when utility workers turned the water off. We're still working to learn where, whether any customers were affected. A new video of a gas line explosion that sparked a massive fire in Oklahoma. You can see the large orange glow all over the sky near Oklahoma City. Police closed down several roads, and neighbors had to evacuate, making matters worse. The blast ignited grass fires. An investigation into what caused the gas line explosion is underway. The Dwight D. Eisenhower Memorial will hold its delayed dedication ceremony today in Washington, D.C. The ceremony was supposed to happen earlier this year, but was delayed by the pandemic. Congress commissioned the memorial back in 1999 to honor the legacy of the nation's 34th president and World War II commander. You can watch the event live on Facebook at 7 tonight. So our cars are getting smarter, but can we trust them? The potentially dangerous limits of technology. Hey. Attention, all personnel. We got to nip it. Go on. We are there. I know nothing. You can find Me TV on Comcast 190, 207, or 1169.
What's new? What's now? And what's next? Every morning on Channel 11 Morning News. In-person visits resume for residents at Westmoreland Manor. According to our partners at the Trib, visits at the county-owned nursing home can now be scheduled for Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. They will take place outside under a tent. Westmoreland Manor suspended all visits in March. They restarted in July, but were once again put on hold after a staff member tested positive for COVID-19. If you live in Westmoreland County, you could soon get free Wi-Fi just by sitting outside your library. The library system just got a $145,000 grant to install Internet hotspots. They'll provide Internet access up to about 300 feet from most library buildings. Officials say it's an effort to make sure people have access to Internet, even if the libraries are closed during the pandemic. Armageddon. It's bad. First, the fires, then the flooding, and next, the scammers. How you could stop thieves from taking advantage of your goodwill. The cold front will bring a difference you can feel. After the break, I'll have details on just how cool it's going to get. On Channel 11 Morning News, we tell you what's new, what's happening now, and what's next. New stories with new details. Breaking stories, updated all morning. And developing stories to prepare you for what's next on Channel 11 Morning News. Weeknights on MeTV. Watch The Flintstones at 6, Happy Days at 6.30, and MASH at 7. You can find MeTV on Comcast 190, 207, or 1169, and on these and other providers. Nobody can read between the lines like Judge Judy. Kogos is going through a rebranding. You're soon going to see a new logo and a new name on stores across the area. The stores will be known as Cohen Markets, and gas stations will carry the Amico brand. The name change should be complete by the end of the year. With so much going on right now in the world, you may be looking for help or looking for ways to help others in need. But scammers are looking to take advantage of hard times. And CNN's Mandy Gaither says that there are ways you can spot a post-disaster scam. Armageddon. <laughs> That's bad. 
From the devastating wildfires ravaging the West to the aftermath of hurricanes along the Gulf Coast, a lot of people are in need. But scammers don't stop when times are hard. If you're a natural disaster victim, the Federal Trade Commission says be skeptical of anyone promising immediate cleanup and debris removal. Check them out before you pay. Ask for IDs, licenses, and proof of insurance. And get promises in writing. Know that FEMA doesn't charge application fees. If someone wants money to help you qualify for federal funds, that's probably a scam. Never make a final payment until the work is done and you're satisfied. And whether you're going through a disaster or wanting to help those who have, never pay or donate money by wire transfer, gift card, or in cash. You can also avoid charity scams by doing your research. When you consider giving to a specific organization, search its name along with words like complaint, review, or scam. And keep scammers' tricks in mind. Don't be rushed into making a donation. If you see any red flags or if you're not sure about how a charity will use your donation, consider giving to a different organization. For Consumer Watch, I'm Mandy Gaither. And more details now. There are also several organizations the Federal Trade Commission says will help you research charities such as the Better Business Bureau, Charity Navigator, Charity Watch, and GuideStar. There is a new proposal in Harrisburg that would relax the punishment for drivers caught without insurance. Right now, violators in Pennsylvania face a three-month registration suspension. This new proposal would let them pay a $500 civil penalty instead. The State House Transportation Committee is debating that bill today. Many new cars have extra gadgets like lane sensors and automatic braking. The AAA Foundation for Traffic Safety took a look at how we handle all that new technology and some of the drivers in the study were told what the system could do and how it was convenient for them. Others were told about how, the, how to be responsible with the features. The study found that if people didn't know the system's limits, they were more distracted or kept their hands off the wheel. There's a lot of great potential for these systems to enhance safety, but it's really important that we understand when and how to use them. The group says it wants to make sure dealerships and car companies don't oversell what the technology can do. Your severe weather Team 11 forecast. Cold weather fans, this weekend's forecast is for you. We have a cold front starting to track through western Pennsylvania and it will continue to deliver much cooler air into the area, really settling in as we go into the weekend. So we're talking about some pretty cool nights. So as you walk out the door first thing in the morning, especially right around sunrise where we had all night to cool down, you're going to experience some pretty cool temperatures. We're talking 40s and even 30s on the board as you walk out the door. So if you haven't gotten your sweaters and maybe even some of the thicker jackets out of the bins or out of the stores, you may want to go ahead and do so today as that cold front again continues to work its way through. What you see, uh, all of this green here and even some uh, yellow and red, that is the remnants of Sally has now moved farther toward the north. This morning was affecting mostly Georgia, and now we're seeing a good bit of rain around the Carolinas into Virginia. Because of this cold front, we're going to miss it. No additional rain for us now today. We could squeeze out an isolated shower as this cold front tracks through, but chances are very slim to none. Expect a pretty dry day today and much more uh, dry air filtering in behind that cold front. But again, really concentrating on the cooler air coming in. But I do want to show you storm trackers so you can see the uh, small rain chance we do have. We have a shower here or there mainly to our south, but really staying dry. And you see behind uh, that cold front, that drier air really filtering out that cloud cover. And that's also what we're going to see for your Friday, becoming very sunny into the afternoon for your Friday. And just to show you a perspective of how dry we are, we actually have been quite uh, improving. Our drop monitor just a few weeks ago was completely shaded in. The latest drop monitor came out this morning and showing that some areas are still 
abnormally dry. We could be doing a little bit better. We could be uh, we could use some of that additional moisture from Sally, but we're going to continue to be dry as we go throughout the rest of this week and even as we start the next. Show you that in just a moment, but uh, abnormally dry for Armstrong County into portions of northern Westmoreland County, also around Pittsburgh and the northern portion of Washington County. So at least we're not in a drought. That's off to our uh, east there in a moderate drought, but we're actually doing pretty good. We are keeping our eyes on the Gulf. We have this little disturbance here. Within the next 48 hours, it has a 90% chance of becoming a named storm, and it could be a tropical storm Wilfred, and then that will be the end of the alphabet, at least for the Atlantic 2020 season. And then we have to go into the Greek alphabet. So that's something to watch as we go throughout the next 48 hours. Looking at our temperatures right now, dropping in a pretty big way, 70s into the 60s, and then overnight lows, 50s into the 30s. <laughs> AT&T wants to launch a new phone plan. They say it will save you money, but there is a catch. You know, there's always a catch. What will you would have to watch to get the savings? Now local steals and deals. Hey, Lisa Robertson here with local steals and deals. And here's a question. You ever notice that if you're working out, if you're doing yard work, whatever it happens to be, there are times when you just get overheated and you have to stop, even though you'd like to keep going, right? This is a company that you're gonna love. It's called Mission. This is instant cooling technology. It was actually founded by world-class athletes back in 2009. So athletes like Serena Williams and Drew Brees and Dwayne Wade. And this is so cool because it's fabric that is proprietary and it's patented. So all you have to do is literally get it wet, wring it out, snap it. Now it's activated. Now it's actually going to change the evaporation process to help keep you cool for hours. So a friend of mine said, let's test it. She gave it to her husband who was going out golfing on a crazy hot day. He came home and said, oh my gosh, that really works. And here's the cool thing. You're going to use it for hours. And if you still want more cooling, you just Get it wet, wring it out, snap it, reactivate it, good to go. These are all really lightweight fabrics. Look how fabulous that is. Machine washable, super easy, reactivate as many times as you want. Reusable, obviously. This is the gator, by the way. So I showed you the towel, here's the gator. So you can activate this and put it around your neck to keep you cool. You can put it over your head. You can do a million things with it. You can put it over your face. You can even use this dry. If you're saying, hey, I just want to use it when I'm running as a face cover. I just want to use it when I'm running in somewhere as a face cover. Use it wet or dry. So these are the things that you're going to use all the time. And I love the fact that they're lightweight and they're easy. And I love the fact that they're even going to give you sun protection. They're UPF 50 as well. So you can throw them in the washing machine as many times as you want. You can reactivate them as many times as you want. And whatever you do, definitely go to localsteals.com and get them for 20% off right now. Great company, great concept, and patented. Music is giving comfort to babies in the NICU. It's the perfect companion during the pandemic when family is limited. Local parents started the program after losing their child. It makes us feel good to help other babies. Spreading joy to the most vulnerable makes us proud to be from Pittsburgh. Proud to be from Pittsburgh. Brought to you by your local Honda dealers. Great cars, great people. For a great deal on a Honda, visit shophonda.com.
Clarkson Show at 1 p.m. on Channel 11, y'all, starting September 21st. A new idea could save you money on your next phone bill, but you would have to watch an advertisement before making a call or sending a text. If you sign up, you could save 5 to $10 on your monthly AT&T bill. The company's CEO says the ads would be targeted based on what you view or search on your phone. If approved, you could sign up as early as next year. The new Guinness World Records book launches online today, and here are some of the new record holders. Frank Hackham from England stands at 4 feet 5 inches tall, making him the world's shortest bus driver. Also from England is Marco George, who toppled 70, topped 76 miles per hour on his bike while performing a headstand on the seat. There it is, okay. And Canada's Sarah Louise Jean used a type of throwing weapon to floor tap her way into the iconic record book, tallying 385 taps in one minute. Pretty cool stuff I can't do. Pretty crazy stuff. <laughs> That's all for Channel 11 News at noon. Our next newscast is tonight at 5 o'clock. You can get breaking news updates anytime at our streaming apps. Just search WPXI on Apple TV, Roku, or Amazon Fire. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. is happening in your neighborhood, Channel 11 News is there. We're in McCandless, Cranberry, and Butler. We cover news everywhere you live, not just downtown. We're in...